touch in the microphone LTE router. Here is an option. It is the TP-Link TLMR6400. A competitor to this is the Huawei 4G router B525. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the TLMR6400. Right in the box, you get the router itself. There it is. Uh, it's got this little protective covering, SIM holder for the smaller size SIM cards, uh, Ethernet fly lead, dual antennas, and your power supply. Right, just having a look at it on the front, we just have air vents. On the side, again, just some air vents. But on the back here is all your connectivity. You've got your two Wi Fi antennas, which your power port, your on off switch, your LAN three ports and then your LAN WAN connector, your Wi-Fi reset button over there as you can see and then your Wi-Fi you can actually manually turn it on or off. The SIM card is slotted over here so there's no opening of this device, it is a sealed unit. Alright just having a look at the power supply requirements, it's a 9 volt and it says 0.85 amps. So here is the power supply with the regular jack. Right, you can just slide that off and you can put your antenna here on the side and this can only bend one way as you can see it goes like that so if it is mounted flat you'll have it like that if you mount it on the wall well then your antennas would face upwards like that there are wall mounting options here so you can mount it with two screws into the wall and hook it on right so here is my sim card and as you can see i put it in the sim card holder and unfortunately that happens so they do provide you with a little sticker now here is the sticker i've just opened it and what you're supposed to do is just put it on the holder like that uh, this is very cost cutting a very cheap approach to doing this it's nice if it came as a tray and you could slot the sim card on the tray with the contacts facing this way you don't want the contacts uh, uh, blanked by the sticker so what you're going to do now is it's ready to insert into the sim card slot so i'm just going to insert it like that and just note the orientation can you see that there's a bevel there and if you look on the sim card you can see it's also beveled so no matter which size sim card you use it has to be inserted in this orientation so the connectivity side is facing down and i put it in like that you can hear the click and it is now in if you want to remove the sim card you press it and there it uh, comes out all right, so I put it in there. Just in terms of the SIM card size, it takes the micro and nano. It does not take a standard size SIM. So if you're using the older SIM, the larger ones, you will have to get a SIM swap and get the smaller SIM. All right, just to show you, this is the SIM card size that the router takes or smaller. This is a standard SIM. This is too big. Now, if you have a look there, how you can see the different sizes. So this one you cannot use in that router. It's too big. And now I'm ready to set up the router i'm just going to connect it using the ethernet cable that came with it like that to a local computer i right, just having a look at my ethernet fly lead i'm not that impressed with this because it feels very cheaply made and if you have a look at the wires what's supposed to happen and what's supposed to happen are these wires supposed to come all the way to the end if you have a look here blue and the blue white are actually down so this cable could even be faulty if you have a look there can you see that those why is over there the blue and the blue white are actually recessed actually down orange white is actually only crimped on one of the pins you see a crimp does this to the wire does that it crimps it like that so this is a poorly made rj45 ethernet fly lead you can see it's only crimped once so i'm going to uh, use this one but if, when i do install this router i will use my own fly lead i'm just going to show you this is how it's supposed to be you can see all those copper wires are sitting right by the edge because if you look here some of these have fallen in so this has not been crimped properly right here's the unit i'm going to plug it in there we go and i've turned it on now you'll see the display over here. All right, that's telling you the power is on. That's telling you there's internet access or the internet is on. That's Wi-Fi is on. And that is telling you that you have connected a LAN cable to one of your ports. All right, so the signal strength, as you can see, I only have one bar showing here. Ideally, you should have two or three bars. So just make sure that you install the router in a place where it can get good LTE signal. Right, to set this up. Uh, you can do this one of two ways. You can either do it with the Ethernet cable and you're going to connect the Ethernet cable directly to the Ethernet port on your network interface card on your computer or laptop. So in this case, if I was going to set it up with my laptop, I would just connect it like so. 
Now you can also set this up by Wi-Fi. But right, so I'm going to connect to this TP-Link router firstly via Wi-Fi. And then after I've showed you how to uh, connect to your router via Wi-Fi, I'll show you a second method using the LAN cable. So now uh, it doesn't matter if the LAN cable is plugged in or not, I'm going to be connecting via Wi-Fi. So if you have a look over here, uh, click here and make sure your Wi-Fi is turned on. So I turn it on and you will see an advertisement of an SSID. This particular TP-Link is TP-Link underscore 4386. You might find yours is slightly different. Anyway, it's obvious because it's the only TP-Link router around me. So and now it's asking me to connect automatically and it wants a password. Where do I get this password? At the back of the router, you'll see a unique password. Right, so I copy that password and I enter it into the space here and I say next. Now it uh, verifies and it connects to the TP-Link. Now I want to set up the router or at least log into it and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Okay, so it's now connected and you see that it says no internet. The reason why it says no internet is probably because the uh, SIM card has no data or it wasn't inserted correctly. So that's telling me that the computer connects to the router but the router is not connecting to the internet so let's log into the router and see what's the problem now you need to open a web browser session you can use internet explorer you can use chrome you can use firefox it's up to you the default ip address is 192.168.1.1 that is the ip address to get you into the router to log into the router i've inserted it here and pressed enter can you see it takes me to the uh, splash screen of the tp link so now immediately it's asking me for a password all right so i've just put a password so long and then i will now log in okay so you can see why i've got no internet access can you see there it says no internet access and you see it's telling me there's no sim card so i specifically took that sim card out so this would happen so you can see why i'm not getting internet connectivity now if i insert the sim card in it will activate the internet Remember that removing and inserting a SIM card must be done when the power is off. Right, now I've inserted a SIM card and it's now asking me where I am. Because you can see what's happening here. It's acknowledged that it's connected to the internet. You see it's telling me 4G and the router now has connectivity. So if you do not get this happening, then have a look at your SIM card. Put it in your cell phone. Make sure you've got internet connectivity on your the SIM card. Because if it's not working, then it's probably a SIM card error. Okay, quick setup. Where are you? So it wants your uh, time zone. Okay, so this is the network name. You don't really have to do anything here. It should do it automatically, depending on your ISP. But for most in, but for most people, it will be automatic. Now, this is very important. You must change this. You can see that was my SSID. I don't want that to be the SSID. It's almost like uh, anyone could use that. So at this point, I suggest you immediately change your Wi-Fi password and the SSID. Then you'll put your uh, password here and then you can press next. Now what you'll notice is uh, the page almost goes dead. You see, I try to go to advanced, I go to basic, it's dead. And why it's gone dead is because I'm not connected to the router anymore because it's pushed me off the old SSID, the old network, and now I must reconnect with the new password. So if I come here, you can see that if I go there, there is the SSID I've just created. So I'm going to click on it, connect, and now it's going to ask me for that very password that I've just changed. And then as you can see, it takes me back to this page and uh, I've now changed my Wi-Fi SSID and the password so the router is secure. And the reason why you do that is because anyone could just pick up the router, look at the SSID and the password and have access to your router. Okay, so now I'm effectively connected to the router. I could just leave it at that and you've now got internet access via the router. That's a very basic setup. I'll just walk you through some of the settings here. You can see the status, you can see the signal level. Uh, you can see the download speed. There you go, your download speed, upload speed. All right, so this is uh, quite important because it gives you an idea of how much data you've used. 
Now I'm going to switch off my wireless radio so that I can prove to you that I'm connecting correctly there. The wireless radio is off so if I go here you can see it's not dead. So now how do I connect to the router with the LAN cable? So this is part two of the video. Now the first thing you need to do is make sure the Ethernet cable is plugged into an available uh, network port on your computer. Some computers have more than one. Right, so for example, can you see that I have more than one Ethernet port? So here it says Ethernet 2 and it says unidentified network. That happens to be the TP-Link. So why is it unidentified? Because I haven't accessed this network. And if you look here, if I try and... Uh, go through to the login page of the router it won't allow me and the reason why it's not allowing me is probably because i have a manual ip address set so if i double click there and i come here and i double click here you can see that i'm on the 10 0, 0, 10 range whereas this router is defaulted to 192.168.1.1 these are in different arranges completely so what happens is my computer and the router cannot see each other so i will rather say obtain the IP address automatically and as soon as I do that I'm allowing the router to give me its choice of an IP address so the router is now acting as a DHCP server DHCP server is a server which provides IP addresses to local users all right so that is now connecting to the network and what i want to do is i actually just want to show you my new ip address can you see that i've used the command prompt i just went and i said cmd and it loaded the command prompt and then i typed in ip config and there is the command and can you see that my ip address is 192.168.1.101 so i am now on the same range as the router because the router is 192.168.1.1 why it says default gateway remember the router is the device that allows you to connect to the internet so that's one of the reasons why it's called a gateway it allows you to exit out of your local network so here the uh, router's ip address is 192.168.1.1 and that is the same ip address i need to uh, i need to set into the web browser so now when i click on it you can see it immediately takes me into the tp link router because i'm now on the network so there we go i'm now set up with the tp link although very basically and now if you want to change your IP address, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, just looking at a summary before I go there. You see here on the left-hand side, these are the different menu options for you. Now I want to go to uh, network. And under network, you can see I've got internet, pin management, data settings, LAN, dynamic DNS, static routing, IPv6 tunnel, and USSD. Now I will just tell you, you need to go to LAN settings and can you see that is the IP address of this router. Now I want to change that. I'm going to change it to 10.0.0.2. I can leave the subnet mask uh, in the same, it doesn't matter. But now you'll see here, it changed something called the DHCP pool. What that means is that the uh, router is going to be allocating IP addresses. Now you can set this if you want to uh, have the router allocating IP addresses from uh, 10.0.0.3 all the way up to whatever you want, uh, 244, that's up to you and then the router will allocate those IP addresses. Ideally if you have a small network, you know you don't, you can just uh, set this in a smaller range. Okay, and the least time is just for how many minutes will it store that IP address with that MAC address, meaning that if you leave the network and you come back, you'll still have that same IP address because it's stored in the router's table. Uh, it'll have it for 1,440 minutes. But if you set this to like five minutes, this is more like an airport when you connect to their Wi-Fi or you connect to their network. The minute you're gone, you come back, it allocates your brand new IP address because somebody else has taken your IP address. If that doesn't make sense to you, just leave it as it was. Okay, so this this is the new IP address for this router. Can you see it's 10002, which means that once I save this, I will no longer be able to connect to the router via 192.168.1.1. So I'll save this. It will reboot the router, and then you'll see that I will now need to connect to it being on the same network. Right, so now it is rebooted and the router is ready for me to connect. Can you see it automatically changed the IP address? And I just wanna show you, if I did put the original one back, you'll see that it, it can't do anything. It's just gonna say unable to connect. But if I put the new one, uh, you'll see that it'll take me to the TP-Link's homepage. And there you go. So I can just log in 
and can you see that I've now logged in but I'm now on the 10002 network and if I just show you my new IP address you'll see if I go here <clears throat> You can see that I've been given the 10.0.0.3 IP address. So if you're setting this up on your network and you want to st set static addresses, you can also do that. You can come here and you can say 10.0.0.10. Uh, as long as you put in the gateway, which is 10.0.0.2, that is the TP Links IP address. Right, and then just make sure you put the DNS server. I'm just going to put the router's IP address as well. So that'll also be 10.0.0.0.2. So it knows where to look for a DNS address. And I close here. Now you can see it's still going to allow me to connect. There you see. Uh, if I want to go into the internet, I can go... There we go. You see it'll connect in a moment. So there we go. So that is how you set up the static addresses if you want to. And that is how you connect via the LAN. I hope that was helpful. And thanks for watching. Cheers.